Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the Four Tech Make Your Loco channel. So as you can see behind me here, I've been changing out a lot of engines recently. Some transmissions, some transfer cases, but a lot of engines. And a lot of it is due to lack of maintenance. And that's what we're gonna go over today. Uh, we're gonna show you one good example on this 3.5 EcoBoost right here. Uh, but some, they are due to engineering defects straight from Ford, from the factory, like this 2.0 right here, 63,000 miles on it, 2017 Fusion, Ford told them to pound sand and take it somewhere and fix it yourself at 63,000 miles. And then we have uh, the uh, 5.0 back here that has tulip valves in it, uh, 175,000 miles. That was another engineering defect in the early 5.0s. So we're changing that out. But the one I wanna talk about today is this 3.5 liter right here. So this engine has like 224,000 miles on it. Yeah, it's a good amount of miles, but the EcoBoost engines, the 3.5s, so they can last 300,000 and beyond as long as you maintain them. Uh, so we're gonna go over to it. We're gonna look at the engine real quick on here, and then we're gonna look at the turbos over here uh, and how they failed. So basically what's happening is that the customer was relying on the uh, oil filter minder in the cluster telling him when to change the oil. I don't care what anybody says, what kind of oil you use, you want to change the oil, full synthetic oil, on an EcoBoost every 5,000 miles, if not sooner. Why? Because there's a lot of blow by, there's a lot of wear uh, to the chain and the components inside of there, and that's the whole reason why they came out with the SN Plus SP oil spec, is because the EcoBoost engines are putting such a demand on today's oils, they need to introduce a new oil spec to support the engines because they were failing because of the amount of soot that gets past the rings, uh, low tension uh, compression rings, stuff like that on there uh, that are causing a real issue with these engines. So if you maintain the oil and change it out, instead of letting it circulate in there, all that soot, which can't get filtered out because if it did, it would get, the filter would get plugged real quick if you change the oil itself out, nice good drain out of there, you're starting off fresh. No fine uh, abrasive material from the soot in there to start wearing out chain links, etc. in there. So it, it all comes down to, to maintenance on there. But in this case, with the 3.5 EcoBoost, uh, the customer brought it to a shop that thought it was knowledgeable, and they, they basically failed him. So we're going to show you today what they did wrong and what caused this engine replacement right here on this 2015 Ford Expedition 3.5 liter EcoBoost engine. Let's take a look. All right, let's take a look at this engine and see why it failed. So again, it's a 3.5 liter EcoBoost engine, right around 224,000 miles on it. And looking at it with the valve covers off, you can see the oil isn't exactly been maintained too well. So the customer did what he thought was right. He was following what the instrument cluster said the intelligent oil life monitor built into the cluster, and he changed it whenever the cluster told him to change it. Otherwise, he didn't even think about it. So as you can imagine, it was an extended oil change intervals on here that led to the demise of this engine. So it doesn't look so bad with the varnish on here, but once you start getting into critical areas like, oh, I don't know, the turbo oil feed screens on here, you can see Houston, we got a problem. Uh, so you can see the oil feed screens are completely plugged on here. Let me get you focused, there you go. So you can see the screens are plugged due to oil breakdown attaching to the screen on there. And you can see how they're squished like that, that they're sucking in uh, due to the oil on there, the oil not being able to get through the screen. So they're really bad on here, you can see them on both sides, they're really bad. They're plugged up, they're sucked in, and it was starving the turbos of oil. By comparison, when I do turbo manifolds or coolant fitting, which are all common failures with the turbos on these engines, I always change the filters out on here, and this is generally how they look. I mean, you can see right through it, right? It's just a screen, all right? But it's trying to protect the turbos and this is how they normally look. Obviously, plenty of oil can get through there and the turbos never have a problem. When you start running extended intervals like this guy did, 
we start plugging up that screen and the oil flow to the turbo. What do you think is gonna happen next? The turbo is gonna fail. So these turbos, they get, they run really hot, especially on the turbine side here. And they can run up to 185,000 RPMs on the EcoBoost engines. So it's a really high RPM on there and they rely on a film of oil constantly going through it for not only lubrication, but also it provides a cooling effect to the turbine housing on this side. So it's very, very important to have that good oil flow to the turbos. So what happened with this engine is it wasn't main, main, maintained exactly properly, you know, to spec. And this turbo right here in the passenger side failed first, okay? And it failed and they popped on a new turbo and down the road he went. They never changed the screen on there. So guess what happened down the road? It failed again. Now this side, the screen also plugged and this one also failed. This one I believe was original. This was a, a replacement. And this one failed big time. So if you look down inside of here, we're looking through to the compressor wheel right here. Okay, and I'm gonna go on the back side here. I'm gonna spin the turbine wheel. They're connected by a, a shaft. And you can see all the damage first off on the wheel. You can see all of it from contacting the housing, stuff like that, look at that. I mean, it's ready to just let go on there. It's splitting, then contacting, all that stuff. And it's due to the lack of oil inside of there get you focus again and all this radial play you see it so there's some axial play on there but a lot of radial play and that's where it's contacting the housing because it's just so worn out now so the bearings even on a brand new turbo they'll have some radial play okay very small amount perfectly normal once they're pressurized with oil they float perfectly within the housing really fast and they do not contact the housing. This one you can see, boom, contacts it. So these are binding and sticking and throwing all kinds of stuff throughout the uh, intercooler setup on there, lots of metal. And what's worse is that this one especially was just dumping oil out the turbine side on here. Tons of oil. You can see, I mean, it was just dripping out of the exhaust. So. This one, the oil feed that was coming to it, just basically um, took all that oil that was coming into it and shot it out the exhaust on there, dumping it, burning it, and this engine got down to two quarts of oil when the spec is six on here for an oil change, probably 6.57 dry. So down to two quarts of oil, the engine, the mains, the rods, all that stuff is going to start to fail, and it's just a domino effect after that. So the main point of this video is yes, you wanna maintain this engine. You wanna to stick to 5,000 mile intervals on there. You can obviously see why. Um, looking at the more critical areas and the fine areas, I'm sorry for the focusing issues, we'll get it fixed though, there we go. So you're looking at more of the critical fine screened areas like this and the VCTs, and you can see the amount of hardened up, look at that, oil on there. You see some metal, that's from the engine failing, uh, but what I'm talking about is everything that's plugged up on here. See that? And you'll see it over here. And these screens are even finer, look at that. These are even finer than the screens on the uh, oil feeds. So yes, in order to avoid all kinds of issues with this engine, even premature chain stretch, you wanna maintain the oil but also, the bigger point of this video is, if you're going in for turbo work on one of these engines, and you're probably gonna go in at some point in time, sooner than later, because the coolant fittings right here and on the back side, they like to fail, okay? And, and leak coolant. So you're probably gonna go in and get those changed sooner than later. Uh, the manifolds, they like to pop studs on them and start causing an exhaust leak. And in order to get to the manifolds, you gotta pull the turbos off. Whenever you go in for any kind of service where the turbo is going to be removed for one reason or another, insist that you get these filters changed out. You want to change them out looking like this, still flowing clear. You don't want to wait until it gets to this point right here because nothing was getting to that turbo and that's why they failed 
big time on these two. That's the whole point of this video because this is not talked about enough and this is a critical lifeline to these turbos to make them last. If you maintain the filters and the oil and everything else, these turbos will last just as long as the engine, 300,000 miles plus. Trust me, I've seen it. But you gotta maintain the oil. And when you're going into shops, stuff like that for other work, you must be knowledgeable about your engine and insist on certain parts like this being replaced because you know what? A lot of shops, a lot of techs, they're lazy. This pipe is down and out of the way. They pull off the turbo, they get to the manifold, whatever else. This pipe is down and out of the way. They never touch it. And this just pushes into it and pushes into the block over there. And they never touch it. They don't want to touch it because they'll have to bend it back and out of there to get to this uh, fitting on here. And they don't want to touch it because then you got to change the fitting and it costs more money and it's not in their budget. And guess what? Now you're going to pay for it down the road with turbo replacement. Or in this case, spectacular failure and engine replacement too. It's not cheap, guys. That's all for now. I just wanted to really hammer that home because it's not talked about enough. That's all for now. See you guys next time.